So good morning. Very pleased to welcome all of you. Thanks for being here. We are very honored to have the Chief Information Officer for the City and County of Honolulu, Gordon Bruce, here with us today. Here in Honolulu, Gordon has brought some very visionary ideas to a older city and county infrastructure. And we'll be delighted to hear from him and what he's doing to bring the city and county up to speed. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you, Scott. Good morning, everybody. Oh, uh, an applause beforehand. That's scary. Anyway, let me take this commercial out of the way, <laughs> since I heard this is being recorded. So I'll black, black, little black it out. Anyway, let, we can keep this uh, interactive, so feel free to stop me at any time as I go through this uh, technology report after being with the city a total of one year, almost to the day. So. Um, uh, bear with me a minute. Some of you have heard this story, but uh, I like the way I tell it, so I'm going to tell it again. So um, this is how I got this job in government. Now, for those of you that, that have known me in the community, the last person you would ever think you would see in government would be me. My mantra was the separation of tech and state. I thought there was no way the two should ever be together. And when I got to the city of Honolulu, I realized that was true. <laughs> um, the uh, I was uh, coached by someone to... Uh, interview with the mayor for this position, but only to get a consulting job, not to get a real job. I wanted to go in there and try and get some consulting work. And so um, he had a recruitment team out there looking for a CIO, so I went in and told them all the wonderful things I could do under contract. And shortly thereafter, I got called to have an interview with the mayor, and I thought, for sure, I'm in. I've got contracts to keep me going until the day I retire. Had an interview with him. I did not know the man. So uh, I did not know the man. I did not uh, vote for the man. And he knew it, uh, which made it, which is an even interesting, more interesting story. And lo and behold, to get even, he called me one day and said, would you like to be the CIO for the city and county of Honolulu? Um, I was standing on the street when he made me this offer talking on a mobile phone. I said to him, how long do I have to make this decision? I didn't know what it paid, which I subsequently found out was not a hell of a lot. Um, I didn't know what it paid. You know, I didn't know uh, 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 much more about what the benefits were, if there were any benefits, those kinds of things. Heck, I don't even get parking. i got to pay for parking. I mean, it's just, there's not much going with it. So um, I said, how, said to him, how long do I get to uh, make my choice? He said, till you hang up the phone. So, so I stood there and said, okay, I'll take the job. He said, great, we have a press conference tomorrow at 2. Be there. <laughs> and that was it. And so next you know, I'm now working for the city and county of Honolulu as their new CIO. And uh, this guy is an incredible guy, uh, uh, very uh, sports-minded, so driven like crazy. Um, his integrity is... Uh, beyond reproach, and that's one of the reasons why I, I stayed there. I committed, I guaranteed him that I would, I would give him as long as he wanted me around four years. I also told him I know nothing about politics and that when it came to the political side, I would probably get in trouble, which I have done. Um, but he's been managed, he's managed to bail me out many, many a time. So um, just to give you a, a sense, this is, this is um, our, the administration's principles, what we're committed to, uh, our mantra, if you will, uh, fiscal accountability and integrity. Um, providing essential public service in, in, a, in an efficient way, uh, honest, open relationship. We um, uh, will talk to anybody. They can come and look at anything. As a matter of fact, one of the things I just had completed and will be made public in about a month, uh, I had an audit done of the information technology department. And, you know, it came and it nailed us pretty good. And, you know, but I don't, that my point to the staff was do not get defensive on this. This is an opportunity to help justify us getting the funding and whatever's necessary to take it to the next level. So, uh, and we're going to make that public. I'm not going to, we're not going to hide it and, and do any of those kinds of things. Uh, uh, it was done by the city council's audit committee. So within the, within the, uh, the um, elected branch, they came in and did it. So it's not an administrative, it's kind of like the semi outside looking inside. Yes, actually, the, the the key contact person in the group was a, a IT background, had a master's in uh, information technology. So, a great question. Yeah, usually you get someone coming in from you know a big eight firm, and it's it's someone who just graduated from from high school. Anyway, um, I should I should be fair. Anyway, I told you I'm not political. That's why I get in trouble. Uh, um, you know, looking at different ways to create solutions and challenges, enhancing the quality of life of people around here, and serving the people in the city. 
uh, with pride in the spirit. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll talk about you know government technology, what, what we what we've uncovered over the past year, and about a new uh, program that the city's gotten itself involved in. It's Honolulu as an incubator. We will we uh, um, go out and solicit, and I'll give you an example of one case where we will agree to be an incubator of new product, the city and county itself. So you get the government involved in, in doing those kinds of things. Um, independent study. When we first, when I first moved in to the position, had uh, volunteers from the outside came in and did an independent study. Said that the IT department had been uh, underfunded by minimally a hundred hundred million dollars in the previous five years, and and going beyond that, it was it was amazing. Infrastructure was outdated. The systems and applications were old and disparate. And I'll give you a sense for this. If you look to the left of this of this chart, these are systems that are the far left side. Far left side. These are systems that are more than 30 years old. And the next one is 20 to 30 years old. So you can see the, the significant majority of the significant systems that are running in the city and county of Honolulu are over 20 years old. They're running on IBM mainframes that are no longer manufactured. They're written in Assembler and COBOL. Assembler and COBOL programmers are more important to me right now than Java programmers. And the universities are cranking out tons of those guys. Just find it. I got one Assembler programmer. And the guy's 35. He's self-taught. I may have to go back to coding again. This is going to be pretty. And then you've got you know, 10 to 20 years old. If you get to the middle, it uh, takes you into, into the next range. So it gives you a sense. for, And we're talking the major applications for the city. The core financial system is 27 years old. The personnel system, human resource system, is 25 years old. The, uh, we run the Department of Motor Vehicle System for the, for the state of Hawaii, which is unique. It's usually a state function. So we dr run driver's licensing and motor vehicles. Our claim to fame, we just finished a study, we have the oldest DMV in the country. There is no one comes close to us. 35 years old. 36 now. It's pretty amazing. So it, it's, uh, I still run, when I went in there, we were running 50 DOS applications. We still had DOS applications that were running. We're down to about six now. Um, I had PS2 Model 50s as servers. So for those of you that can't you know, so we're talking back in some pretty interesting technologies. Um, hardware, I've given you a sense for that. That's really kind of where, it, where it's been at. This, by the way, if you haven't seen this picture before, this is Remington Rand's concept of what the home computer was going to look like in the year 2000. So pretty amazing. The steering wheel is what's really got me thrown off. I'm really not quite sure. Someone told me, well, it's the mouse. I said, oh, of course. <laughs> and then uh, someone else said, what about the cost of an ink cartridge for that printer? I said, oh, yeah, it's got to be off the scale. Anyway, so it's kind of an interesting. But uh, we've got some pretty interesting stuff down there. It looks just like this. Agencies that we support, you know, what are the, who, are, who are our customers beyond the, the, the people that live in Hawaii? Uh, budget and finance, obviously, you know, it's like any other organization. And, um, and environmental services. So we've uh, all of you know, the sewer treatment plants, wastewater processing, um, all of the garbage disposal and pickup, the, the landfills, all of that, we support all of those. Uh, customer service, which is driver's license, motor vehicle, dog licensing, bicycle licensing, you know, those are old systems too. All, go down all of, all of those kinds of things. Um, police department, we support all of the uh, uh, 800 megahertz radio system was turned over to, to the Department of Information Technology about a year ago. So um, we now are responsible for all of that 800 megahertz system, which I'll talk a little bit further on as we get into it. Now, that's a 65-year-old piece of technology, just to give you. Now, with us, it's only 10 years old, but it's only worked for the past two. So it's kind of an interesting concept. Um, uh, Permits and planning, or planning and permitting, it's, you know, all of the, those guys, GIS information systems, the, the uh, uh, permit processing, all of that. Facilities management, management, well, that's all of the buildings. We have 700 facilities in the city and county of Honolulu. We're the 13th largest city in the country. Not that many people realize that. We're in the 13th largest city in this country. Um, so we have all the buildings, all the facilities, all the roads that the city owns, the light poles that we own, the traffic signals, all of those kinds of things. The whole island is the city of Honolulu, so it's a pretty massive uh, place. Fire department, we support them. We support uh, emergency services, the city clerk's office. So that's you know all the council meetings, all of the agendas, all of the things that relate to to you coming down and giving testimony and telling the telling the city council that I need more money. I mean, all those things that you come down to do is 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 supported by us. The managing director's office. Um, uh, and and it, go, it just goes on and on and on and on. So these oh, enterprise services, that's another one. We still report all the golf courses that the city owns, uh, the uh, Blaisdell Center, Concert Hall, the zoo. Um, those are so we have a real vast array of customer types. So all and all different kinds of businesses that we're running within the city. This is just to give you a picture of what our ERP 
solution will look like when we start it. Now, when I we say we start that, last year we floated the RFP. We got approval from council for the first, after five years of trying, the council approved us going and floating an RFP to, to start rebuilding from the ground up. Well, we've got to do core financials first. That's the thing we've got to do. This is a $50 million project when it starts from the beginning to end. 50 could go to 75. So this is, and this is just to get, this is just getting this piece in. This gets financials and human resources. But to give you a sense for this, the, uh, the center part here, if you look at um, general ledger over here and then payroll up here, these are all the systems on this one of nine pages that will get touched the moment we replace the financial system. So, and they, those subsequent systems are 10, 15, 20, 30 years old. So the, it's like a house of cards, right? The moment we touch this piece, we've got this rippling effect that's going to that's going to happen. So we we floated this RFP. We're in the final process of making the decision. We'll announce that decision in March of this year, and then we'll move forward. Aggressive schedule. We plan on bringing up the financial system, the core underlying financial system, in uh, July of '07. That's one year. Government doesn't do that. I mean, it's just not what we're, what we're typically, but I've, I've, I'm hanging my hat that the team we put together are going to do that. Um, government has a success rate of one in nine in implementing our piece. So that we're putting up against it. And so we're, that's, that's our first piece. This is DMV. And again, this is one of nine pages. So there's nine other pages that trickle down from this. This is uh, DMV, same situation. We pick driver's licensing or we pick motor vehicles. We touch this. These are all the things that start getting uh, impacted as we move down the line. Uh, which vendor is uh, payroll? Uh, I, unfortunately, because of procurement, I can't tell you. So, but, uh, and, uh, but I will in March. So we, 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 procurement law in the state of Hawaii is very um, uh, highly managed, so to keep it on the up and up and the level. And the level. So you've got to keep these things all under your hat. Do you have source code uh, through all of it or, or some sort of escrow or something? Uh, yeah, uh, well, if, if, it, if it was written by us, we have the source code. In some cases, the vendors are no longer around, so we may or may not have the code. So that's part of the dilemma. We're just finishing rewriting, and I, I came in there. It was, a, it was the end of a four-year project, so I, I didn't want to stop it. They just finished rewriting the, um, the payroll system from a vendor's second-generation language in COBOL and Assembler and rewrote the whole thing exactly as delivered by the vendor. And they spent four years doing that, but we're too far into it to stop it. And so it, you know, it's just one of those things, um, in-house staff are doing it, and we're turning that, that system on this year. Did I hear you say you're rewriting it in COBOL? They rewrote it in COBOL and Assembler, yes. That makes sense. Okay, yeah, so that makes a lot. And they started that project three years, three, almost, oh, almost four years ago now. And, but too far into it when I came on board to stop it because the other system was collapsing. And... The guys who were writing it were only fractures, right? Well, let's put it this way. They're my age. And they could retire tomorrow, which, again, I go to the university and say, I need some more COBOL programmers. And they say, sure, we're cranking up three or four of those tomorrow. Uh, so this is a real, it's a, kind of an interesting uh, situation. I won't talk about today, but all of the projects that I did cancel within the first quarter being on there, millions of dollars worth of projects that just were, were, were killed. Um, you know, some of the big questions that come up, too, is like, you know, can we use open source, you know, for our, our service level oriented architecture? All those layers that I've got to, you know, Touch after we touch ERP. You know what am I going to use? Am I going to use open source in there? Can I use WebSphere? Can I use Novell? Some of Novell's products we've looked at. So there's all kinds of options that we're looking at. We were a closed shop. The previous administration would not allow anything in there except Microsoft. We rewrote an application that was a Java-based application. We wrote it, rewrote it, in Microsoft SQL Server. .net for the vendor. Now the vendor has two products, and we paid them for it. So those are the kinds of mindsets that were there. So you know, it's a, so um, but that's that's subsequently changed. Now I tell you, the moment I mentioned open source, that trickled all the way to city council, and even came up during my confirmation hearing. And my and where one of the one of the persons said to me, "What's this Linus stuff you're going to be putting in?" I mean, that gives you a sense of the, their technology you know, acumen. But um, I had to explain to them, hey, we have to look at all kinds of options. It's the application. It's the underlying infrastructure. We have to look at the best and fastest and, and, and cost-effective way to get this stuff in. 
Um, you know, one of the questions is, is it cheaper? Everybody, you know, not everybody, but a number of people say, hey, it's cheaper to go this route. Well, there's this learning curve in the beginning. I've got a whole bunch of people that are anti open source within my department because they were essentially um, uh, driven to think that that was not the way to go. So I've got to get these people converted and get them trained and get them educated. I offered free training to anyone who can go and take any Java course, anything they wanted to take in an open source, 130 employees, 138 employees, zero signed up. So it gives you it gives you a sense for the for the, the kinds of things, and it's not their fault. They have been so. This is the first change in administration at the city and county of Honolulu in 20 years. It's been the same administration. So for them, they're a little gun shy, and they're a little, you know, they're not sure they can trust people yet. So you got you. Know, and again, I'm a. This is the standard line. There's the A team and the B team. Okay, and, and I had meetings with all the staff, and they said, hey, you came in here, you're part of the A-team. And I thought they were being kind of like, you know, like, don't put me in this pedestal. I've been in this business 30 years. I mean, I started as an operator, worked the midnight shifts, did all that stuff. I'm not that. They said, no, no, so you don't understand. A-team, you're the A-team, we're the B-team. We be here now, now, and we be here when your ass is gone. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, okay, got it, I understand. Because, you know, we're appointed officials, and we could be gone at the whim of the mayor, or, the, or um, uh, if he doesn't get reelected, or decides not to reelect, or so on. And then, you know, we got um, frontline versus infrastructure and a whole bunch of things that we're looking at in that side. So, um, so where do you start? So what do you do? You know, where do, where do we start? So these are the things. We, we got the mayor's directive on technology. We got that. Re we revised that and reissued that last year. It's being revised. My plan is, my mantra is re you revise it every year and you follow it. The new version of that's coming out is just going down to the mayor's office for signature. The revised strategic plan for this year is just going down. Um, to, the, to the mayor for signature. We set up a, a, an IT governance board to determine priority of projects. The mechanism that was used in the past was the decibel method. He who screamed loudest got it. And plus the police carried guns, so they tended to get a little bit more, you know, a little bit more um, attention. So, you know, those were the kinds of things that, that uh, was there. An application inventory. That's that diagram. The giving. What are all the applications that we've got out there and who, who touches what? And, and get all of that in there. Infrastructure inventory. I want, you know, drawings, diagrams, whatever we could possibly put together. We're doing a massive infrastructure change. And just to give you a sense of it, of it is that our infrastructure for the entire city and county, which is all of Oahu, and we have a fabulous fiber backbone throughout the city, along with an 800 megahertz radio system backbone and so on. On the fiber backbone stuff, though, the technology that we were using at the ends was just antiquated. And uh, we're going from a, like a four, four, racks, four racks to 15 racks to support it the way it should be with redundancy and backup and all of those kinds of things. So, um, and, it, it's, and the people are doing a phenomenal job. Vendor, um, when we went through the, the bidding process and selection process, the, the, the winner of the hardware side was Cisco. The, the vendor that we buy the hardware from is Hawaiian Telecom. Um, and then we use an outside third party, Envision Hawaii, to help us with the installation. They told us, you know, this is going to take you, you know, six months to do this. My guys did it in three weeks. Three weeks. They did the first phase. They worked. I said, I'll, I'll bring guys in to help. You know, I'll come in the weekends. What do we can do? I'll splice fiber if we need to splice fiber. They did 700 pairs of fiber in a, in a, fiber in a day. I mean, and just, and just like five people. And, and so they've got the skill sets, and if you give them the go, they'll do it. And they called me and said, Gordon, we need to go buy such and such. Okay, go buy it. Well, what about just go buy it? We've got the money in the budget. I'll worry about getting it paid for down the line. Don't you go. And out they went. They went and just got the stuff and brought it in and took care of it. So, um, so we have now have an uh, IT governance process in place, which is made up of the directors of all of the departments, the agency agencies, and five volunteers from the outside, independent business people. I have a meeting with them today, as a matter of fact, to go over our priorities for next year. Um, uh, enter into business partnerships, and that's we've done a, a number of those going on. I look into ways to motivate the staff, and that's a big challenge. You know, how do you get these people motivated and incentivized, and so on? And then the whole budget things, and we're looking at budget in a whole different new way. We got operating budgets, CIP budgets. I've moved stuff around. They had stuff in capital budget that should, had no right being in there. It needed to be an operating budget. So now we're moving stuff where it's supposed to be. We're using, we're going for grant money. We never went for grant money. We were going now for grant money, looking at ways to get grants, uh, and then we're doing some applications, unique ones, benefits based with the vendor. Where the vendor doesn't pay, it doesn't get paid until the application's in, and they get a piece of the transaction. So they're motivated to get it in on time. They watch for scope creep because it doesn't benefit them. They got to get the thing delivered. So those are new ways that we're looking at, at doing things. I've got an hour, and I could go on for days. So I just got to be careful and watch my time. Um, and and the, some of the challenges we have is you know the the, the si they're silos. All these agencies are silos. The good thing is we have a centralized 
Department of Information Technology within the city and county of Honolulu, which is different from the state where everybody has their own DIT department. So at least that's the good news. But the other part is, is that every one of these silo agencies run on their own, independent from one another. And so we've got to start looking at process versus function and how we can bring those pieces together. And plus, you know, we're always open, right? Government's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You guys never have to worry about, you know, going and giving up any of your work time to going down and stand in line for two hours. I mean, at all, right? So that's, that's part of the, the dilemma as well. How can we, how can we you know, give, uh, give the impression, or more than the impression, be open more? And obviously that's more online and less in line. And so we've come, we did a number of initiatives on that. And I'll show you some of the things that the staff cranked out this past year. Almost 50 major projects this year. They never had a success rate like that. Have a hundred? Uh, you know what? It took me uh, six months to figure that out, and the only way I could do it was get a photograph of everybody and put it up on the wall. It's true. It's true. 138, because we had employees, and then we had contractors, and then we had contractors, contract pro programmers, or contract staff, and then we had funded contract staff that were funded either by the state or some other agency. But now, and as of the end of this fiscal year, which is June, I will have. Um, four contractors, and they will just be funded by the outside. No other contract programmers know exactly how many bodies I have, and I, have, I will have zero vacancies, funded or unfunded. So none of the shell game of hiding the bodies, you know, the body count stuff, so you couldn't answer. So now when council asks me that question in my project here, they say, great, I have 138, and here's their photo. <laughs> um, so, you know, and then we, you know, innovation and delivery and execution of services, you know, start, start people thinking outside of just, you know, what, what we've done in the past. Come up with ideas. Give me some ideas on how to solve things. And they've started to do that, which it took a while. And they'll go into, we'll go into a meeting and say, well, how are we going to fix this? And nothing. It was just like stone cold silence. But then you had to get them to come up with an idea. And I'll give you a great example. We took, I came in there. One of the systems that we support um, uh, which was turned over to us was the, were the phone systems. And when it was turned over to us, we are also responsible for keeping 911 current. So when you dial 911, when the phone, when they, when they get it, they know you're calling from your address, right? Not mobile phone. We're working on E911, by the way, but right now, 911. Well, that database had not been updated in two years and had over 40,000 errors in it on top of that. Now, this is public safety, okay? And I said, well, how can you live? How can you sleep at night? Well, you know, when they turned the, the, the phone system and all that responsibility over to us, they didn't give us the body that maintained it. So you had a full -time, they had a full-time person just keeping this current? Yeah. And then one of my new staff, 22-year-old female, who just came in and she said, you know, I think I could write an application with our new Cisco voice over IP system that we've just put in DIT that will allow me to bridge these two pieces together. Really? Okay, go ahead and do it. Week, five days later, she's come back. It's written, finished, done, ready. We send electronic file now to the phone company. They update their database. Three years, uh, two and a half years, with people sitting around not doing it because the way they had done it before was with a body. And she fixed this thing. And not only that, she automated it. Automated it so well that Hawaiian Telecom's having to catch up to us. So, but there was kind of a neat kind of thing, right? Neat kind of thing that she was able to do. It, it started opening up the gates, right? Well, well. Mary Jen can do this. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. So they've started to trickle in. Um, so we looked at program highlights in 2006, 2007. We looked at things required by federal law with a lot of DMV. We were the first city in the country to come up with a new uh, federally mandated driver's license. We went in there. I said, let's get it done. Yank out what we've got to do to do this. We, went, we, have, we partnered with a vendor. The vendor gets a piece of every driver's license card that we issue. That's how they get paid. So benefits-based process. Do you think they took them long to get that system up and running? Heck no. And they built the interfaces to the old DMV system just so we, that we could have it running. So, um, so that, that, that's, that's public safety, 800 megahertz. 800 megahertz radio. It's, it's the technology of the world. Everybody uses it. Police, fire. Well, in our case, now fire. They didn't until this year. So um, 911. One of the reasons the fire guys got trapped in the building, because they used a different radio system than the police. The police couldn't tell them to get out. They couldn't communicate to each other. No interoperability. Katrina, you saw it. The, the antennas went down. Police radios, done. History, no communication. That is the world of communication. We're going to replace that. But this year, we still have, we still have to use it. It's, we have 7,000 radios that we have to support. 
almost, well, it's getting more than that now, but over 7,000 radios we have to support. Just this year, we brought fire up on 800 megahertz. Now police and fire can talk to each other. It's like, it's, it doesn't sound like a big deal. It's a big deal. Now the police and the fire can hear each other's radios. They can hear who's going to what. But here's the dilemma, is that in order to make all this stuff work in an emergency, you create these things called talk groups, and they're mechanical. They're not, they're not software-driven or anything like that. So we have 400 different talk groups. And so if it's an incident XYZ, then, oh, that's talk group 306. I mean, you have to know this stuff. Now, who remembers that? But that's the way of the world. That's all, a lot of that stuff's got to change. Um, E-government solutions, looking at that. E-911, um, I, I was um, appointed by the governor to uh, uh, sit on the E-911 commission and, uh, here for the state, and that's the one that will allow us to start tracking your mobile phones when you dial 911. We brought Maui up on Nextel just um, uh, the last quarter of last year. So they now have the capability, at least from the Nextel standpoint. We're going to start working on Oahu this year. So that's going to be an interesting. Uh, we have there are, we have five. We have within the city we have three different dispatch 911 centers, and with the entire island we have five because you got the military. So it's an interesting. We got to bring all those together. The steering committee, network and infrastructure, and ear, ear repeat to name a few. What is uh, 311? Uh, 311 is uh, you know those non-emergency type calls. There's a cat in a tree. Right now they call 911. So we're going to be setting up a 311. We've just started that. We're going to the state for federal monies to do that. That's an ex expensive undertaking. That, a 311 system costs more to run than build because you start becoming, it's your, it's your one call center, right? It's everything comes into there. So you call about your property tax, you call about your permits, you call about cat in a tree, you call about your garbage pickup, all of that stuff. And so the training is pretty amazing. I toured the uh, 311 center, and they have two of them in New York. And they just implemented them a couple of years ago. I can't remember the number, but I think he said it, it cost him $35 million to get one center up and running. It costs them almost, almost $40 million a year to run it. Now, that's New York. But still, they have 350 people. It's 24 by 7. So, but those are the kinds of things that, you know, that we should be doing as government, providing. Oh, yeah, you, you, get, you get the trickle down, and you get departments. Instead of people doing this, they can be doing the, the uh, other kinds of jobs. Uh, fiscal year 05, we uh, went in for $25 million. Fiscal year 6 through 8, I'm going to be asking for almost over $100 million. Uh, 9 through 12 is going to need another $100 million. Operating CIP, you know, I talked about all those kinds of things. So those are the kinds of money we're going in for. Um, oh, just to give you a sense of now, now, the city and county of Honolulu, our debt service, the previous administration left us a debt service that equals our, that's just the interest on our debt, equals our entire operating budget. It's huge. Um, so, and, and, and we have, and our, our total rainy day fund was zero. They rated the sewer fund, it was zero. There was money set aside for the sewer fund, 438, 400 and some odd million dollars, empty, blank, not a dime. There was money being, your, your, and that was money that was paid, taken out of your sewer dollars, rated it, gone. The, uh, there was money that came out of your driver's license fees to rebuild that system, zero. There's no money left in it, it's all gone. They just raided those funds and just took them all away. And so we've, inher we, you know, we've inherited all this wonderful stuff. Isn't there a windfall from the real estate uh, prices going to the... That's a, that, it's like, for us, it's like, well, because it's our only source of revenue. You know, we run this DMV and driver's license thing, but all the ticket money and everything goes to the state. We don't get a dime. Which I also found out that we have, we've, we've been paying, the state's been reimbursing us for this system based on a contract that was written in 1991. Do you think I'm in there looking at revising that puppy? You bet. So I mean, so yes, there is, but we're, but it's, 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 we're not gonna. Yeah, we're we're gonna. The mayor wants to give back 40 million of it. He wants us to come up with a mechanism to do that. Um, instead of putting 25 million dollars into the rainy day fund or, or 50 million, we're gonna start with 25 and build it over the years. So, but there is some money's coming in, definitely coming in on on that side. Um, some things that were accomplished in 2005. This is, you know, this is the mantra: more online and less inline. This is to get people, instead of you coming in and having to stand in line and look at things. The first one we did, which was kind of like, you know, the pothole hotline. And you think, now what the heck is that? Well, the roads hadn't been touched in years here. They were like just brutal. And the mayor says, I'm going to declare a war on potholes. And he said to us in the IT department, can you guys help us with some kind of, of mechanism, solution to do this? Again, this, get the right staff together and they start thinking about it. When I came into the office in DIT, I had um, two phones on my desk. 
an IP solution and an analog phone. Everybody had two phones on the desk. I said, what's this? Oh, we're testing this IP solution. Oh, good. How long have you been testing? Oh, this is our third year. I unplugged the analog phone. I went outside and I went, a month. I want everybody on IP. We don't have the infrastructure. It's just I want everybody on IP. So they went and they did it. They took care of it. Um, so now everybody's up. The infrastructure is getting better. We're building new fire headquarters. They're coming up on it. So we had this. Now we also run Exchange and Outlook and Exchange. We have eight Exchange servers and we're running that. So with the, what we did was we came up with an integrated messaging solution. You call the uh, pothole hotline or you go to the web, whatever you want to do. If you call the pothole hotline, you leave a voice message. This is Gordon. There's a pothole at the corner of King and Young Street. Um, that gets turned into a, a, a voice email message that gets sent to the roads crew. And then they allocate them out by district. So they send the crews out now with this whole list of things to do. And we've, we're writing an interface, and it's almost finished, within, using the Outlook database to do all the reporting. So our you know, counts on re pothole repairs have just gone way up. And, and the mayor said, and I don't care if it's a state road that, that, it's, that there's right next to a state road, because here in, in Hawaii, in Honolulu, the roads change, like within blocks sometimes. He said, just fix it. Just fix the pothole. So you know, make all about one on the corner. If there's one on the other side of the road, go fix it. So this is one that came up, and it's very, very cool. When, we, when, the pre, when he announced it at the press, the press were more excited about the technology than they were about us fixing the potholes. This, yeah, but so and, and then Sprint said, hey, I tell you what, we've set up a star 77 on our, on our Sprint. If you dial star 77 on your Sprint phone, you get the pothole hotline. So a vendor just came in and said, hey, we'll do this. Uh, and then we have it on the web, and you can do that kind of thing. But now you can, other things you can do, you can book your driver's test online. You just have to get, go in at 2 in the morning to book your test, because you probably wouldn't get, be able to take it. And your test would be available maybe three months down the road. But you had to go in at 2 in the morning and wait in line. And maybe you'd get to take it. And if you didn't, then you'd, you could book the appointment. We did that all online. And, we left, we, and what it proved, though, it said when we started looking at the numbers, now if you go to book it now online now, we're booked out past March. But we do have empty slots. So you can go down and wait in line if you, if if you want to do that. But what, what it's done, what it proved, it showed, uh, enabled us to show that we don't have enough um, examiners. So we hired six more examiners. So at least that got, it, it, it was able to show, hey, this is, what we've got to, this is what we've got to do. You can now, you know, online motor vehicle registration, you can do that online. Um, the uh, the uh, title inquiries, you can do those online. The dealers used to have to go down and stand in line, and they stand in line with a stack like this, right? And so they'd go up to a, a thing, and you'd be waiting while this dealer took care of 70 permits. They can do it all online now. So that gets them out. It gets them out of the line. Vanity plate. You can order it online now. You can check to see if it's available. You just have to go stand in line. All these kinds of things. Um, uh, the police department can do their health exam. Um, uh, social security ver verification. This is um, when you go in to get your driver's your driver's license. We have to check all over the country, right, to make sure that you don't have outstanding criminal warrants and a whole bunch of things, and whether you're a terrorist and all those kinds of things. And it was real tough. Now they can do it. They can actually check it online while you're there. So all this kind of stuff that makes it so much easier. We got the neighborhood warrants. We put a lot of every form that you need to fill out for the city and county of Honolulu is now online. Now that's maybe doesn't sound that that great, but you know what? It's better than having to go down and pick up the form. And my prime example is disabled. If you want to get your disabled placard for your vehicle, you had to, this is the past, go down, now I'm disabled, go down, stand in line to get the form. Now I take the form back to my doctor, the doctor fills out the form, then come back in and stand in line to get the placard. Now what you can do is just go to the doctor. The doctor can print it off. You can print it off, fill it out. Now you still have to go in, but we're going to change that if I have my way so you don't have to come in. But at least we've eliminated two steps uh, in, in the process. Um, and a, a whole number of things. The other thing is we built this um, um, application now where the, the, the mayor and the, and the uh, managing director and the like can track every capital project that the city's working on. You want to know where it is on budget, within the budget, within... Um, uh, schedules, whatever, it's there. It seems like so highly intuitive, right? Like you want to know. But now they know if anything's starting to look like it's going to overruns or any, they know right way before it happens. Those kinds of things. Um, more accomplishments in 2005. Yes? 
Oh, the city DART. Okay, the city DART system is if you, you know, you imagine how many emails the mayor must get or calls, right, you know, from, from the constituency. So what happens now is it comes in, it gets logged into this system called DART. And so it says, you know, John Smith called from so-and-so. He's concerned about X. It then gets said, okay, that's really a parks department problem. That now gets assigned to the director of parks and gets tracked. He's got so much time, or I've got so much time, if it gets assigned to me, in which we have to get back with the response. So now all of those things sit. And every cabinet meeting, the mayor comes out with the list. You've got 21 outstanding. You've got, you know, you've got this, you've got this. I want these things addressed. So that's, the, that's, that's his thing. Uh, no, not yet. That's, that's, again, in the works. We're revamping the website as we speak, but it, and even that revamp doesn't um, take care of that issue. Um, we, we have standardized, however, on, a docu on electronic document management um, process, and we're going to use uh, DocuShare, which is the Xerox product. And so we've started rolling that out. And you'll see it now. Actually, it's, it's, it's ingrained in city council. So if you go online now and you want to look at bills and resos and all of that stuff, it's all part of the DocuShare process that we're implementing. Because you, you can just well imagine the paper that government pushes. Um, and we, we, we've developed our own in-house um, e-forms process that will eventually phase out, but it's pretty cool um, so that we can track a contract as it goes through the... Through it. Now, not everybody uses it because we're using it in our own internal for DIT, but it's the kind of thing that you know, we're, we're demonstrating, saying, hey, we should use this in all the other agencies. To get a contract approved, 14 steps. 14 steps. It should be four. It goes back to one department eight times. So why don't you just take care of it at once? Why does it need to go through this? So there's lots of that. So I did, I, I bounced around your question, but uh, no, we have not. It's something that we certainly have to look at, we, we, and we're looking at it in different approaches. Um, other things we brought in is, is a blood pressure collection system, uh, HPD automatic field reporting. The police cars now have two, about 2,000 laptops in the police cars now. And so they, when an accident happens, before they used to fill it out, write it, come back into the office, type it up on their computer, print it off, give it to the sergeant. Now what they do is they do it on the PC in the police car. We have, we're building this wireless grid around the island. And so, um, and we use edge cards. We're a combination of edge cards with grant money we got from the federal government for Homeland Security monies. Um, and so the police report, now the police officers in the field are an hour more a day, and the report is printed off when he comes in. And now, we're, now we've worked out a way to get, uh, accept electronic signatures. So now we're not even going to have to print that off. So now his sergeant's just going to be able to approve it and move it on. So these are, this is the, the, the thing that we've got going out there. We're doing some, we're doing some testing with, um, um, well, I'll tell you about that one in a second. Uh, telephone savings. We went in there. We looked at the phone system. We saved $200,000 a year. Uh, we, I said to the guys, um, when was the last time someone checked to see how many lines are being, have been abandoned? Oh, we've never checked. $200,000. We had lines that we were paying $200 a month for hadn't been used and no one knows how long. Didn't know. We started converting a lot of uh, OPX lines over to uh, uh, Centernet for now, just because we can't get everybody up on voice over IP. I got five phone systems, 20 years old plus. Um, so th that's out there. PBX reconfig. We looked at our trunking. We went to bid. was able to save another $60,000. These are real bucks. These are like, this is not n money that I'm going to squander. Um, we, uh, we, we've, we, didn't, we didn't spend it. Uh, 991, 911 database, I told you about that one. DIT savings. At the end of the year, I, had, I was coming up to the end of the fiscal year, and my staff started saying, hey, we got all this money. You better spend it. On what? Well, just get the stuff, because if we don't spend it, we're not going to get the money next year. I don't do that. And if you can justify why we can spend this on something, I'll now spend it. But if you can't come in, and I said, and by the way, what is all this racks of stuff downstairs with, with dates on it, 2001? You know, routers and all kinds of stuff. Well, that's, we're going we're gonna to get that implemented. I said, it's 2001. This is five. It's already outdated technology. So I'm going to load up these racks with more stuff? I don't think so. So end of the fiscal year, I left $550,000 unspent. And I deallocated another quarter of a million dollars from previous years and said, I don't want the money. The other agencies, were, those that had been around in government for a long time, said, you're crazy. I said, no, this is my mantra. 
You wait when I sit in front of council and tell them, by the way, I gave you back a half million dollars. And don't penalize me this year for it. Because that's the thing. Well, and it happened in, it's happening in budget right now. Well, you know what? You didn't, you didn't spend the 550 last year. I said, go ahead. You just tell me who you want to sacrifice. I'll just sit there in front of council and tell them, hey, you know what? They cut it out because I decided to save it last year. And now I gave, I'm not going to be able to do this project. So, and that's, and that's life. So, that's why I tell you, I'm not political, but so far, you know, it seems to be working. We implemented P cards, purchasing card system. Anything under $2,000. Massive savings. We haven't been able to calculate the, the hundreds of thousands of dollars that we can now, that are now saving. People can go out and purchase stuff and get it like this. We also made a change that didn't show up here within the, the budgeting process. You couldn't, you had to allocate your spending by quarter. So I would say, okay, I'm going to spend this much in this quarter, this much, this, this much, this. Well, in one of my cases, I, and I said, this is nuts, because that meant if, if I needed money in the first quarter on something that I was working on but didn't allocate it to the third quarter, I couldn't go on with the project. I had to put it on hold and wait for that quarter. But this is nuts. So I said, I said no, we've got to come up. I talked to the managing director in the mayor's office and said, we've got to do something different. I can't work like this. So they, said, they cut a deal. They said, I'll tell you what, if you take another 2.5% off your budget, we'll allow you to move amongst quarters and up and down, even between line items, except in payroll. Deal. I signed it in a minute. So did about 90% of the other agencies. Because now I could start doing it. Perfect example. We're going rolling out some voice over IP solution. I needed 10 new phones. And that was allocated in the fourth, fourth quarter. And I said, they said, oh, and the, the staff hadn't gotten used to it. Oh, we can't put these phones in. I said, why? Well, it's 10, 10, it's 10 phones and the money's not the fourth quarter. I said, I can move it. Go get it. Really? Yeah. Boom. In. So they're thinking, well, this is, this is the way it's, this is the way business is supposed to be run. So those are some of the things we happen. Um, Again, I'm watching my time. It says 9.40 on that clock. Is that about right? Okay. Um, I keep my phone, my, my phone, my phone. <laughs> I keep my watch ahead of schedule so that I'm, I'm never late. You know, like, like, that really works. Um, um, so then uh, P cards, DMV, we did a master plan on DMV. Cisco interoperability early field trial. I'll talk to you about that one in a minute. And then the new driver's license I mentioned earlier. Uh, the CIP tracking, uh, we put a new liquor licensing ID system in. We did that as well. Um, I don't know how many of you have big, lots of controversy going on with the Liquor Commission. Um, if you, you, refuse accounts receivable. Here, no, put this one in. You know, look at your, your, where you can hit, hit and run. We were like net 120 on getting paid on refuse. So like, you know, the, you, you know the, your tipping fees, right? They go and they dump, but they wouldn't pay us for like 120 days. So we looked at the system and looked at the process, and with some changes in about three months worth of work, we now get paid within 30. And if they don't, we won't allow them to pit tip. They can't go to the, they, they, they get, oh, you guys are behind schedule and you're, so this is all, change, and change the whole workflow within the refuse side. So start to get the money in for, further. I run every database known to man, IMS, DB2, SQL Server, Oracle, pick one, access. I mean, they're not, almost every database. Um, but and we did an IMS to upgrade, but you know it's not a big deal. But what we're doing right now, and and, and this is intentional, and they're they're everybody's freaking out, including myself. Is, you know we're running back versions of CICS, back versions of IMS, and I'm talking maybe like three, four, five releases back. And on on and and uh, I'm asking everybody to get it all up, current current supported releases. Well, it's that domino effect, right? Well, we don't know what impact it's going to have on the applications. But I said, well, you've got to get it up here because we're going to replace this mainframe next year. We're going to lease a replacement, which will be newer technology. And the new stuff doesn't run this. The new stuff's going to run some open source. It's going to do a whole bunch of different things. You know, we're going to you know, look at this box from a, a, a whole different, because can't, we can't replace it right away. So we better be there because next year we're going to replace it, and at least you're not going to have the software underlying infrastructure, software issue. So that's all going to be done this, this year. Um, Network infrastructure upgrade, I mentioned that. Um, Active Directory web services, we've done a bunch of stuff. In the wings, we've got a major web redesign. We're hoping to roll that out. Um, we have 200,000 web pages. It's all over the place. Yes? Yeah. There, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to find is trying to find a, uh, uh, an, an application that I can f identify and say, and I've been talking to Novell about some, some ideas and, and IBM and so on, 
say, okay, I want to find an application that we can pilot, if you will, that will be a home run, that will open up some eyes and say, okay, oh, wow, you did that in this period of time, and it's cost us how much? And, and so that's what I'm looking at. Because I fear once I get one of those in, then it's going to the trickle-down effect. Because that's what we're proving now, is that at least I'm learning. You get little things in, then it starts to, to work its way, way through the organization. So we're looking at altern- you know, options. What's the kind of thing I can do? And, and, and then it's kind of like, then I've got to drag some employees screaming and kicking into it. And there's a lot of peer pressure about not doing it. So it's, it's, more, it's a lot of this inner working. Like, if you go over there, then you're going to be blacklisted over here. And don't forget, we're the B team, and he's the A team. So, and I may bring in outside. I may just go, so you know what, I'm going to outsource the X, and I'll just do the whole thing that way. So that's where we're at right now. We're in this, you know, kind of identifying. We came up with a couple of ideas last night. We were sitting around, uh, you know, a, a couple of beers, and boy, I tell you, you can just come up with a whole bunch of things. Right, Don? <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, th- those kinds of things. So that's, how, that's the approach that we're looking at. I need to find that, that small, visible, home-run application that the mayor can do a press release on. That's, you know. The piece. What, what size database would, would that home run application? It wouldn't have to be that big. I mean, it could be. Um, I'm, I'm looking at portion of driver's licensing. You see, driver's licensing motor vehicles. There is no can packages. You're going to have to build something. We're going to have to build. Even the we had a study done to do the evaluation and tell us what it was going to cost to do it. You know, both DMV and driver's licensing is about 25 million total to do those systems. Uh, and there isn't canned packages out there. You're going to have to take pieces of all kinds of different applications and pull them together. Maybe if I could find a piece of, if I could pick one of those pieces and get a SWAT team together to work on it. So the American, and, and we can turn it on, right? It's in pilot, but by the way, you and now John Q. Public have the ability to do X. So I'm open to ideas. So that's what, um, that, the, the panel that we've got now of outside experts um, helping me with the, um, the governance of the applications. We're meeting for two hours this afternoon, as a matter of fact, three to five, to kind of like brainstorm some ideas. Are any of those people uh, open source literate? Yep. Yeah, we have uh, one guy in there who's definitely open source literate. Um, public safety. It's one of the major projects we worked on this year. Um, Honolulu is the incubator city. This is an idea that I came up to the mayor. I said, you know, why don't we become the, the, uh, the, train, the testing ground for new product? For, you know, it helps stimulate you know, us as a more progressive city. At the same time, we might be able to get some cool applications from these guys that we can use. It'll you know, save us some money, possibly. Um, uh, lots of different things. He said, okay, let, 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 uh, go, 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 find one. So w- I did. And the one that I found was uh, inter- this interoperability issue with um, the 800 megahertz radios. Because 800 megahertz doesn't talk to VHF or UHF or vice versa. I can only talk to an 800 megahertz radio system. And so I said, okay, we, we'll take a look at that as, as, our, as, as something that we'll work on. So let me show you this. This, this, this is the, the, uh, the island of Oahu. The uh, orange lines are, are uh, 800 megahertz microwave backbone for the police radio system. And we have um, these 25 towers. And when do you see the pictures of these? We have these 25 towers that uh, I inherited. Um, around the island. So let me give you an example of what happens if a police officer on the, on the east side of the island wants to talk to someone downtown. They, um, he's on the, in Waikai area. He gets on the microwave at Coco Head, which then goes over to Liahi Hospital, to the micro station, which then goes up to Tent Round Top, which then goes down to Sand Island. By the way, when the boats come in, that link is broken because the, for 30 seconds while the chimneys go by. But the stacks go by. Then talks to the officer down there, and that's how they, that's how they get to each other. Okay, so if any of these one link goes down, you're toast, right? It ha- it, now we can go back the other way. It's going to be a lot. You got these latency issues and a whole bunch of other things that happen with it. But we're toast. This is the condition of these facilities. They haven't been touched in 25 years, painted, maintained, or anything. Nothing. This footing is one of is one of the is cocoa head. I could push the tower over. This is another facility. This, um, these trees that are not supposed to be there, thank goodness they are, because they're holding up that antenna that's falling down. <laughs> they hadn't cut the grass in years. This, this building on your left, 
since this picture was taken, and this is in 2003, okay? I went back there in 2005. I toured every facility, went to every police roll call to find out what was going on with the El Dorados and everything. When I went back there, the, all, all the panels on the left are gone. They've all fallen off. Most of the stairs are missing on the, on the, to get up to, to do the maintenance. And I kept telling these guys, and the one on the right, that tower is down. No matter which way you look at it, that tower is on the ground. I said, what is it for? We don't know. But it's fallen down. This is the grass around the facilities. Hadn't been cut in years. Look at this door. I had to pry the door open to, for the grass to get into it. This is public safety. This is the concept before this new administration of public safety. Now, my staff have done a phenomenal job in the past year getting this stuff, getting this stuff cleaned up. Band and drums? We don't know what's in it. Pro backup generators? Propane tank? There will be no vegetation within 10 feet of any propane facility. I don't think we quite made it here. When's the last time the generators were tested? Oh, they're tested because they're logged in. And right, someone goes up there every once in a while and tests the generators. But if, when's the last time the fuel was checked for how much is in there? Oh, I don't know about that. So, you know, the, all of these kinds of things. So we, we said, okay, we've got to come up with... We, now, there's $25 million in repairs need to be done to those facilities. Another... Um, $11 million in upgrades in the hardware, underlying upgrades to the hardware to get it, to bring it up to speed. So that's all underway. We've got to rebuild half of the sites. We've got to build the towers and start and build them. And, and we have to do it because 800 megahertz is the underlying piece. But I'm sitting there going, but if 800 megahertz goes down, we are in trouble. Are there other solutions out there? And there's not a lot. There's new companies starting to get into it, or oil companies starting to get into it. And this is where the Cisco solution came along. Cisco, I went to Cisco and I was looking at, um, I was actually there to beat them up over, you know, I was, I was very unhappy with some of, the, some of the stuff. And during the discussion process, um, they had a 15 minute gap where they wanted to talk to us about this new technology that they were working on called IPix, which would allow any kind of communications device to talk to any other kind of communications device. So I could take an 800 megahertz radio and I could talk to a mobile phone, or I could talk to a PC, or I could talk to a regular plain old telephone, or I could talk to a voice over IP phone with this solution. And it was in the lab. I had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. I can talk about it now because we've, we've, we, what we did is we struck a deal with them, became an early field trial city, and said that we would, try, we would, we would re commit the resources to start testing this product. We became one of five cities around the globe, Honolulu, Amsterdam, Singapore, New York, and Los Angeles, who all got to early field trial this product. And we did, um, so we brought the hardware over, um, we did some network changes, we inserted the hardware in there, and we started playing with it. it was, and it was pretty cool stuff. I had all the, I had all the um, uh, agencies get together, like the state. Now, now think about it, I just talked about the city, right, 800 megahertz. The system that the state runs is different. The city that the Fed runs is different. So even across agencies, you can't talk to each other. That's not unique to Honolulu. That's a, a, a nationwide issue. So um, we, and Fire became one of the key players in all this. And so we ended up um, uh, testing this system. We did a, uh, a number of trials. The last trial we did is we had, a, we had a command vehicle, an emergency command vehicle, fire vehicle. We put the equipment in, the, in there. And from that, we were using um, PCs, uh, push-to-talk phones, or not uh, uh, voice over IP phones with a push-to-talk capability programmed into it. Um, PCs with this. this. This is an image of what the 800 megahertz radio looks like. So we, we had that capability. We used VHF. We used Nextel push-to-talk phones. And so we simulated an exercise. We had police, fire, EMS, um, the mayor's office, all pretending that there was an incident going on. And we also did another unique thing called virtual talk groups. Remember I mentioned those 400 talk groups? We did some virtual talk group stuff where we were able to create talk groups on the fly. And within that virtual talk group capability, we could turn them on or off. So pretty cool stuff. Again, early field trial concept stuff, can we, can we or do we want to use this? And I don't see it as a replacement for 800 megahertz radio. I just see it as another alternative, another different piece that's laying on a different kind of technology because I can run it on, I don't have to run it on 800 megahertz, right? I can run it on Wi-Fi. I can run it on whatever. It's basically just a bridge. It's basically a bridge, very sophisticated bridge. But we can do, and we started looking at things that we could do later. You could, we could overlay GIS on top of it and track, you know, um, 
uh, and put GPS on it as well. We could, you can start to track all kinds of different things down the road. And so we struck a deal with Cisco. We're going to be guys the early field trial. Now we're building a new fire headquarters. And the new fire headquarters, fire and fire have been great to work with because they never usually get the chance to be the new and get some of the new stuff. We're putting in a voice over IP solution in there, which they've never had. We're putting in total new access control system, um, IP based, FIPS 201 compliant, new federally standard IT card, as best it can be because the Fed's still trying to figure out what it's supposed to be. But we, we're, that's all, all integrated solution, cameras, access controls, uh, voice over IP, push to talk on 800 megahertz on their desktop from their phone, and push to talk on some of the PCs. So they can monitor. Now the, the chiefs can monitor. They have five major channels that they like to monitor. They have to have five radios to monitor them. Now from, from where they are, they, can, from their, they don't even need the radio. They can just monitor it from their desk. So we're putting that in. Again, early field trial, get this thing working. Um, a police radio, 800 megahertz radio is 4,000 bucks, one. And I got like 7,000 of them. And every time you fix it, is at least fifty to hundred dollars every time you touch it, and we're fixing these. You know, we have a, a radio shop at the police department. And fire have their own radio shop. I mean, this stuff, this stuff. You know, it, it's mechanical. It breaks. The dials break. All kinds of stuff happens. Is this uh, Spitex, uh, an open? Uh, yeah, it is. It's, it is an open standard. And actually, if you go to the Cisco website, you go to the Cisco website and you go under slash news, I believe it is. And then if you look in October the 24th, the mayor and I were in New York for a press conference where we announced, you know, the results of this. We had the New Jersey, the New Jersey uh, Harbor Authority were there talking about how they were using it. Uh, we were there talking about our, our early field trial in the city. There's a video there that talks about it. Plus, there's all kinds of information available to it. Now, it's not a product yet. You can't buy it. But you will this year sometime. You will be able to buy the product. But it's been publicly announced, and so I can talk about it all I want. You can write some cool apps on top of it, yeah. And, you know, it's new, and um, the challenge that, that I have, and I, th I don't think it's unique to me, is that 800 megahertz people are evangelists, and I don't mean it negatively. They've been using it, and they understand that techno radio technology, and they've been using it for year, years. They are real hard-pressed to move them off of that mindset. It's tough. There is no, to them, there is no other solution. It's good. It's reliable. That's why it's been around for 65 years. You bet. That's the Erickson stuff. But when they turned it over to DIT, the DIT department got it up and running. It hasn't been down since we took it over. What, what, what do you that? We put some talented people on it and looked at the infrastructure and got into the basics. You know, a lot of the, pro a lot of the problems were just configuration errors and things that, that hadn't spent time doing. Then you got to the next point, became training and education. I mean, the, the police officers were bending the antennas because they were poking them in the ears. And then the radio wouldn't work, and so they're blaming the system. Um, there was also a couple of, there's some dead spots. There still are some dead spots that we haven't got coverage on. We're looking at new places to put new antennas. Um, started upgrading the equipment. I mean, just lots of money going into that side. That stuff's not pretty either. It doesn't get you votes. I mean, it just, it's not like trees down Kalakau Avenue, right? Is there any change in the 800 megahertz network? Is it, is it now more of a mesh? Like, is it just a ring? No, it's still the ring. It's still the ring. Now we've got lots of back, we're doing a lot more backhauling, so you know, if, if this segment goes down, it goes, takes alternate routes, puts all that infrastructure hardware's gone in to, to do that, uh, and, and, and is going in to do that. Uh, all the facilities are maintained now. I have a grounds crew outside, we outsource it, go up there every month to all the different locations, cut all the grass, keep it all maintained and cleaned. So, uh, and then we've got major construction going on on a couple of sites and more next year. And then we've got 800 megahertz rebanding. I don't know if you know about that, but we have to reband all of that. Federal government told Nextel you gotta move because it's all this, all this stuff that's going on and crashing and going on. So we gotta reband the entire system. And Nextel has to pick up the tab. I think it's like two billion total. We're one of the early cities on the list. So we're the experiment city this. It's going to cost millions of dollars. So, uh, and it takes staff to do that. You, got, you still got to put resources on it. So all that's going to happen. So with that happening, I said we had to, I had to come up with something that start, allow us to start looking at other alternatives. You know, we're putting in our own wireless grid. Um, we started working with some outside vendors who, to, to look at how we can make, make uh, more, more potential things available. 
out there for not only for us but for the public. Um, some pretty cool stuff. Uh, public safety, I talked about identification system, access controls, monitoring systems, and so on. We're looking at that whole thing, uh, looking with the various agencies and how we can start bringing them into the full. We did some unique stuff. On the 800 megahertz stuff, we did some unique stuff with these free space optics that would allow us in, across agencies to talk to one another. It was a test. It works pretty good. So, I mean, we're, we're still not abandoning it. We've got to continue down those, down both parallel, parallel lines. Um, Future incubator products, we're, projects, we're working on one with uh, Sprint, their EVDO uh, card, which is their um, high-speed internet access card. Concept, and one of the concepts was, hey, let's put it on the bus and um, provide it for free to anyone who takes the bus. Give them free high-speed internet access. So we put it on a bus and tested it. It worked pretty good. So now we're just getting ready to put, we're putting all the paperwork together to put it on a number of buses and run it for about six, nine months. See if it, see if it, does improve ridership. I don't know. Especially if you put it on like university routes or things like that, right? It's just, you know, and if it works, when we start looking at rail, make it an inherent part of rail. Just make it part of what we do with rail. So that's going, that's going on. We're working with the police department to put these, um, these uh, uh, cars in the police cars because then they can get on the webcams because they got the PCs. So now with this card, it's full streaming video, they can now look at the webcams before they go to an incident, if it's a traffic accident or whatever. So the concept being, hey, start looking at that. And I've, I've had some meetings with some of the, the, the uh, business people downtown and said, you know, would you pay for cameras and maintain them in around your area if, uh, if the police officers were able to look at it from their cars on their way here or whatever? Uh, yeah, in a minute. You know, like Chinatown and all those kinds of areas. So we're looking at ways, hey, maybe this is some ways of getting, you know, improving public safety and, um, uh, and, and not having to pick up the cost, right? What about a bank? Put the camera, the bank's already got cameras. Get it on the network so we can get to it. If there's an incident going in the bank, we can actually see what's going on before we get there. Those kinds of things. Fire department doing the same thing. You know, right now, if there's an, a fire somewhere out, you know, a brush fire or whatever, they've really got no visual. But we could start to look at, you know, they could take the emergency command vehicle. We could put cameras on it. Use these wireless EVDO cards, transmit it back to civil defense. Oh, wait, civil defense. We could possibly use it there. No, we have two civil defense in this state. We have state civil defense and city civil defense. Ours is bigger than the state's because we got 80% of the population. So, yeah, we have, we have multiples of a lot of things. Um, Open source application development, looking at other things. Oh, back, virus wireless initiatives. I, I brought all the wireless vendors together, invited as many as I could. 35 showed up, said, hey, we want to have wireless Honolulu, and I don't want the government to be in the business, and I know you don't want either. Can any of you come up with some ideas on how we can do this? How we can provide, because what we want to do with the city and county, we want to jump on it, and we want to ride on it. And one of the things that we did, uh, uh, again, we're putting in our own wireless grid, but at the same time, I want to have a private sector one that I can jump on when portions of ours go down. You know, they'll, you know get this whole integrated solution. So um, I've got a whole bunch of things in the air with that going on. But one of the vendors, Skyway Broadband, came in with a unique one, and, it was, and, and we liked it. And they, and they said, "What we want to do is we want to roll out all these hotspots, and we'll open them up to everybody for free, only if they go to government sites and um, travel tourism sites." Is it okay if we do that? Well, we can't stop you from getting to our website, but if you want to use it as your your marketing edge, go for it. Knock your socks off. So we even did a little press announcement and said, hey, actually Don's company also jumped on it. He works for a, 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 a office building company, uh, uh, the largest office building owner in the city. And so they're going to be rolling um, Skyway Broadband's wireless internet access out in their buildings. And, but guess what? Anyone that's in there is going to get free access to the government websites. And remember, I think more online and less in line. They can start doing thing, you know, business transactions at no charge. And I think when I talk to um, Skywave, they've got 40 hotspots now, and they're going to 125. So it's a way. It's not exactly the ultimate solution that, that I was looking for, but it's a unique one. And why not? And anyone can do it. It's just not, you know, it's not sole source. It's not, you know, if another vendor wants to do the same, same thing, we, we, we encourage them to do that. We're looking at um, uh, franchising at the light poles. Good chance of money. The other one is a Honolulu ordinance that we helped get, get through. Uh, it's bill, it was Bill 30. It's now Ordinance 05020. We now will make available to wireless carriers um, city facilities to put your antennas up for a fee. But we now open up 700 potential locations 
for you. Fire stations, police stations, parks. And, we, and we've got some unique. So we, we haven't even, and we've, we've just finished getting the process all worked out to do it so we can fast track these things through. My, my goal is that, that when you come to us to go on a city facility, that not counting your building permit, you will be through the process in 30 days. So you'll know that you can go on our building and have all the permission to do that and then go get your building permit. Now, that's another issue. It's not, but, but at least that's taken care of. And we have a standard template for contracts. We have a standard template for easements, um, licensing agreements, all of that stuff. We've worked it all out, and we've got the process all worked out. Just finished it. It took us a year to get this whole thing together. We've also identified all the locations, so it's kind of cool. So right now I have about, in the pipe, almost $9 million dollars of potential revenue sources, and we haven't even started to advertise this yet. Now, it's $9 million over the terms of these deals. And a couple of the guys are coming in, or the vendors are coming in and saying, tell you what we'll do. We'll put in your comfort station. We'll build your bathrooms. We want a little building on the side. Of it. We'll build your bathrooms. We'll put in the light poles. We just put our antennas on the light poles. And we'll do that. Bring it on, because all we'll do is we'll just amortize it over the course of the, the, term of the term of the deal. And guess what? We don't have to spend the money to put it in. They're going to maintain that bathrooms. I mean, that's, and, it, and, and it costs the city almost a million dollars to build a bathroom that the vendor can do for a quarter of a million because of all of our processes and stuff we go through. So we get it done cheaper. So I got two of those in the pipe. So cool stuff. Yeah, it's, co-location is, is encouraged. I mean, um, we sometimes we might want to jump on it ourselves, but any you know, we look at we're looking at mobile phones, we're looking at data, we're looking at anybody that wants to come anywhere. And we'll, you know, we already have standard rate schedules, so you'll know what the fees are. Now, the only thing that we haven't got a rate schedule on yet, and we'll have hopefully in about a month, is on e uh, uh, rights of easements. Because there, there was no fee schedule for that. But we'll get that all straightened out. So you know exactly what it's going to cost before you even, you know, come in. Oh, to go here, it's going to cost us 24000 a year. The vendor knows right up front. No mystery. And they can, you know, they can decide whether it's worth it for them to do it or not. So that's all been brought under, the DI, under DIT, uh, and, and we're taking care of that. And I think I'm over my time. Um, I, oh, not bad. So that's kind of where we're at. I didn't cover near everything that I wanted to cover, but it gives you a sense of where, where we've come in the past year. Kind of exciting. It's the best job I've ever had, and I really mean it. It's a chance to make a difference. And thank you for your patience, questions, whatever. That's that looking for those home runs, trying to find those trying to find those pieces that I can fit in. We've got a couple of small infrastructure pieces that have happened now because they had no choice. There is it's only in open source. So, but it's not, I, I'm looking more application specific. I mean, the stuff that's buried in the, in the basement of the data center doesn't get you much visibility. It's, the, it's those, that small home run application. So how, can, how can the public find out about uh, opportunities? I have, this is it. I'm out talking and, and the coconut wireless. And, you know, get, getting the word out, and, you know, having people come and call and stop by and, and uh, hey, I answer my own phone when I'm there. Um, I try, I see at least a vendor a day. You can well imagine the number. I'm a very popular guy for obvious reasons, right? I'm a cash machine and, oh, wow, there's some money there. But um, also we got to just, you know, we do, um, I've had um, Novell come in and give some presentations to some of my staff to get them just aware of what's out there. I encourage them to come to, uh, to, to events like this. They came to this last year, and I noticed that there's no one here this year. So, 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 um, okay, I'll get there. Yes. Your funding plan is is it based on Cisco Call Manager? Yes. Yes. Cisco Call Manager. Yeah, so far, I mean, what we've wanted to do um, uh, with it. Now, we're not, not, we're not getting very sophisticated with this right now. I mean, we're essentially the big thing is to make sure we've got reliable dial tone. You know, we, we, you know one, of the, one of the staff built an open source application that does the, the directory, so the directory's online on it now. Uh, we roll out, you know, and again, the only department that had that system that last year was DIT. And then next year is, um, or this year is FIRE with their headquarters. 
And in Halava, there's a base yard up in Halava for one of the um, equipment repair facilities. We're bringing their, them up on it. And then um, we have another office building which has about 200 and some odd phones in that building. And that system, when it dies, there are no parts available for it. So if they lose it, they've lost it. So we're going to roll it out there. But again, it's just basically this stage of the game, you know, with almost 9,000 handsets, it's going to take us years, and, and we'll slowly look at the pieces. I would say, oh, just right now, um, if I count the fire headquarters, 200. Not many. We got infrastructure issues when we go into the buildings. We got oh, just so many things to look at. And so it's a slow, slow kind of approach. Do you have any site criteria? That's where we, all the parks departments, that's what we're doing now. We just, just to save that money, we took them off all these uh, B1 lines, just flipped them to Centrix. As a, just, let's, I said, let's just do that because we can do it quickly. And that saved us um, 140,000. 140,000 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, so then now that's the next stage, right? You get, you get this, you know, you get the first hit, and then you go back and say, okay, now how can we start? And, and we have our own fiber backbone around the city. It's very robust. It's got two gaps, maybe three gaps, and we're going to work on getting those replaced. So we end up with multiple redundant rings. And I'm thinking, okay, now, and a lot of it goes to the facilities, right? Boom. Next stage after we get that done, we eliminate the Centrex piece. We just do it. As long as they put an IP address on it, we're there. So that would be the, kind of the next phase. Sure. Yeah, we're not we're not looking to, to to prohibit it. But if you go to Waikiki, I mean, you, know, you just go down the street here. It's the wild, wild west of wireless down there, man. You get the Sheraton Hotel blasting out there, and they're knocking everybody over. You know, from here, you know, it's here to Sunday. I got this little cricket thing, and I go like, "Oh, look at them all! They're all just." Yeah, it's. Yeah, peace drive. Yeah. It's it's pretty amazing. So, and I asked the vendors if they could all get together and try to come up with a solution where they could work well. Would they play? No. They're not going to play well together. Is there any, since you own you know, 700 sites, and that includes all the parts and all the stuff like that, is there any sharing of infrastructure, for example, the electrical you know, generator? No. Right now, the way we worked it out is that you're responsible for your own power. Um, we'll agree to the location. You put your own power in there. As a matter of fact, the sharing we look at is if can we use it. <laughs> so, for example, we look and we, have, we say, gee, we've got a dead spot here. We want to put a, a bidirectional amplifier up here for our microwaves. Then what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you and say, okay, if we go on this, then we'll cut you a deal on the rent. Right? So it's, that's the, kind of the, the, the reverse of that. So um, the thought being we don't want to get into, okay, he touched this and this broke. You know? You know, one of the examples is that we had the police department in Wahiwa. You know, we, this is before I was on board, but the, the, one of the carriers went up to them and said, hey, um, we'd like to put an antenna on right here in, your, in, the, in the back corner of the facility, and we'll pay rent, whatever. And the police said, no, you're going you're gonna to impact our radio system. Okay, so they went somewhere else. Actually, they went to the Walmart site, put three flagpoles up there, put a cranking antenna up there, blew them out anyway. So we had to go, you know, and then you have to sit and talk with them. And I said, the police, see, you said no, but if you sat down and talked with them, you wouldn't have had the problem. You would have known before while you were going up. So police have come around. They're going, you know, that's not a bad idea. We know ahead of time. I said, yeah. And that way you're not calling me saying the radios aren't working. Because that's what they did. Hey, the radios aren't working. Well, we had lot, lots of problems. Lots of problems. I got one last location. The state owns it. It's been down for years. I threatened them beyond. I went to the governor, and they are now fixing it. And I said, when you're finished fixing it, if it meets our standards, we'll take it over. You will? Yeah. The mayor said, I can, we can take it over. Then you won't have to worry about it. But you've got to build it to our standards. So they allocated the emergency funding to start doing it. So. Yeah, we, 
actually we run, we, we have a number of things. And some, on some of the counties, we run their applications for them. Some of the tax applications we run, driver's licensing, motor vehicles, we run theirs for them. We don't, we don't get together as CIOs yet. That's not on my list of things to do. I wanted to get one year under my belt and learn before I went out there and started preaching. So um, uh, that's the next phase. Now we do have, a, on the state side, um, they have multiple CIOs, but they all report to DAGS, which is Russ Saito. And I joke a lot with Russ. And um, we get together now on a regular basis to see if there's some things that we could start looking at mutually to do. Again, because we, we run a lot of state applications. We run the juvenile justice system. It's a state application. What are we doing running that? Um, but, you know, those are, the, no, those are things. But formally, no, nothing's really. I know the players. I've known them for years. I've been in Hawaii for almost 30 but uh, they, they, they didn't think I'd last in government anyway. Most gave me three months. Not that I would be, f <laughs> not that I'd be fired, it's just I would be frustra so frustrated I would bail. So. Oh, this is, like I said, it's the best job I've ever had. And see, and I don't, and I say this to everybody, I think it drives me, I don't need this job. The, the money is certainly not why I'm there. I've made a hell of a lot more in the private sector. Um, and so I don't have that, you know, I don't have to, to, to do that kowtowing down just because I don't want to lose my job. My fear is losing my job is that now I've got all this opportunity I have now to make this difference is going to go away. And so, um, but I'm just, I just keep going forward and, and doing the best we can, you know, that's all we can do. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, I have not looked yet, but we thought about it. The the mayor, not the mayor, the CIO for the city and county of New, for the city of New York and I got together in October, and um, we've agreed that we're going to put uh, C, uh, the top 20 CIOs of the various cities around the country together, and um, get uh, start doing an annual meeting. Um, so he and I are going to organize this one. I told him, "What are you doing in Honolulu, in February?" <laughs> <laughs> stimulate the territory. Well, you know, that's a, too much of a boondoggle. It isn't going to work yet. So, so we're going to we're going to do that, and then we're, that's that's I see that as my so that's one of my entrees, right? What's the intent here? See if we've got stuff we can start to trade with one another. We have done a couple things. I sent my staff and I went on one of the trips to Sacramento to look at their voice over IP implementation because it's very similar to us. The staff had never gone to a site visit. Sixteen years this guy been with the city. He said none of us have ever gone to another city. No one. And so he built this tremendous, and he's a great guy, great employee. Um, he's done a ton of stuff. And um, he's built this great relationship with the city of Sacramento people. They can't help but like the guy. They've sent him applications. They've sent him network infrastructure drawings, their user's guide, all kinds of stuff that we won't have to develop. And so this is cool. I got, um, next week, I've got eight people going touring five or six cities looking at ERPs. Site visit. Site visit? Yeah. I'm not going to approve this project. You guys don't go look and talk to the guys that are running these systems. So they got all their all the questions lined up, their whole evaluation. I mean, really detailed scope of work that go in. And they're off next week, all of them. I found the money. Why not? It's a $50 million solution, and we're going to spend $20,000 to make, you know, I, I said to the mayor, I said, is there anything wrong with this picture? Fifty million dollars, and I'm not going to spend. And you're not going to spend twenty thousand dollars. He wasn't against it. You know, just, I just using using him to leverage to make sure that they would they would allow the staff and the other departments to go. So, that's the, it's. And then I've gone. To, I went last in October. I went to the Gartner conference, and they have a government segment. So I met with them yesterday. I was on the phone talking with some people with Forrester Research, um, one of their gover government experts in open source. You know, he's talking to me about, you know, government deployments and open source and so on. So they're trying to get our business, so that's why they allowed me to talk to this guy for half an hour. So he gave me some interesting numbers. Obviously, the private sector is further ahead than government when it comes to open source. Who, who did you talk to in JP? Yes. Okay. Yes. It was JP. Yeah. Okay, you got the smartest guy there. Okay, cool. He, has a lot, he had lots of numbers, man. So... Um, so that was pretty good. Who, who did you talk to? You and Gartner, which Gartner was that? You walked over and I was the uh, Orlando? 
Yeah, EXP. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I met some other government people, other government players. But not, that's what I want to do this year. I want to get out more. Again, I wasn't about to go wandering off without getting my feet wet. I mean, now I can go at least and talk with some level of intelligence, I think. Um, but I learn something new every day when I walk in that office. I found applications that no one told me we were working on, all being done under the table. So you know, all those stuff's all getting disclosed. I've got some. I've got some now that are starting to come over, and so um, and and the, the, it's great to see to see that kind of thing. The, the fear they have is that 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 above them, um, there's going to be some repercussion when I'm gone. That's that, and I think I think there's some trepidation there because you know the senior people that are around have been around for a long time, and they've been they've been essentially running the enterprise and doing a damn good job with no money, to be perfectly honest. So. Um, but they, and and I'm a I'm a change. They've never seen anyone like me in there, and they've told me that no one's no one's had experience in DIT, and so and I don't beg, I don't beg the budget office. See, you're supposed to beg, I ain't begging. So, um, but they're coming over. I got you know, like I said, a couple of people on the, on the on the voice side. They're doing some phenomenal stuff. The network guys and, and girls are doing tremendous work. Customer service reps that I have out in all the different departments, thirty some out of them. The majority of them, excellent, just excellent. So a um, couple of applications. I got two people now that are certified project um, PMPs. So um, that's two that are up there. That's two more than we had a year ago. And that's not an easy um, uh, classification to get. I'm trying to get more to do that. So yeah, they're coming. They're coming. They're good people. I mean, they just, and I can understand why they've been sensitive to what's going on around them. Yeah, hundred percent. That's going to change. Yeah, that's all going to change. That was their choice. I know. If I, I can't say if it was Courtney, it was administrations and and whoever gave down the marching order. That's what was followed. So, yes, sir. You come and see me. It's a different ballgame. I'll give you my card. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like I, was, you know, I said earlier, we're an incubator site now. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll look. If you've got an application that interests us, we'll test it. Yeah. Bring. Yeah. One of the questions I have is why our website doesn't have Japanese and Chinese in it. I mean, that was, that was one of the questions that I have. It should. Most definitely. And, 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 probably, South, and probably Korean. You know, as 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 you know, from those sites. So we've got all those pieces to look at as well. I'd love to have that. Say, you know, the website's now multilingual and has this, this, and this. Even the applications, yeah. Even getting, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Well. Yeah, for years. Well, come and see us. We're a different ballgame now. So. And if any of you have any ideas, again, that open source piece, if you've got a particular application you think, you know, go to the city and county of Honolulu website and look at all the stuff we got out there and say, you know what, I think we might have something that fits in here. Um, I had some students had some ideas for the bus that actually had, they had an idea on some bus stuff. And we went down, they toured the bus and thing and, and, and found out it didn't quite make it. But, boy, it was close. So they went back to the drawing board and said they'd come back and see me later. So I said, hey, sure. So if you've got, if you can help me come up with that home run application, boy, that'd be just terrific. We all win on that one. Well, again, thanks again. Uh, great. I love the interaction. I got a few ideas from just talking with you all. See me around on the street. Stop by and say hi. And uh, have a great 2006. It's going to be a super one, I can tell. All right. Thank you very much.